Thank you, Yazu. Um, and I want to thank uh, Panda for having this uh, event and also for all of you for your attention. Um, I want to try to, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to try to set the tone uh, for this discussion uh, in a slightly provocative way. Uh, I've participated in enough of these roundtables on security to know that uh, uh, they often devolve into uh, discussions about how consumers can uh, really are the weakest link uh, when it comes to security. And if we could just uh, educate end users more, then things would be better. Uh, the idea that our security comes down to the end user seems to be something of a, something of a truism. Um, it's, it's a crutch, I think, that allows us to sort of say, sh shake our heads and throw up our hands and say, you know, if only people uh, were to read our blogs more uh, and pay more attention to the advice, uh, we, we, we would beat this problem. We'd be in a much better place. Um, and in many ways, you know, this thinking to me uh, tends to minimize the seriousness of the threat uh, that's facing many consumers today, uh, and, and as well as the threat to businesses uh, and to our respective uh, national and economic security and prosperity. I'd like to uh, present a sort of preemptive counterpoint uh, to that line of thinking by suggesting that we start uh, looking at the notion of cybercrime uh, in a less passive way, to start look at it for what it is, which is, in many cases, organized cybercrime activity. Um, and the big differentiator between uh, random virus attacks and organized crime attacks is that, the, for the most part, the latter has orders of magnitude uh, more resources uh, to throw at their targets and quite a bit more success. Um, so you know, I, th I think it's, it's fitting that, uh, that I'm speaking at a conference sponsored by a company that has made such a big play for uh, so-called cloud-based services. Um, there is, a at the moment, a kind of uh, a fascination with operating in the cloud. Uh, that is, having all of our data, uh, our protections, our servers, what have you, apart from our normal operations. And the rationale here is that uh, by doing so, you can increase efficiency uh, and resiliency. You can reduce uh, the, the risk of data loss uh, and destruction. And of course, when it comes to uh, any virus products, uh, cloud technology really can uh, leverage the wisdom of crowds, uh, where you know, the community of users uh, shares information in real time about, uh, about the latest threats out there. Um, I think cloud computing is a phrase that is at the same time, it's confusing because it, it means different things depending on who you ask, uh, but, but also it's very useful because it helps us focus our attention uh, on data security, where, what really matters. Um, and we only have to look at the, the recent cyber attacks against Google and, and, and 20 other, or however many other uh, top uh, companies uh, to see that this is, in, 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 in some ways, it's pointless to spend all, all of our money and resources uh, building higher and higher walls if we're not protecting what, uh, what is supposed to be protected by those walls, and that is uh, the data, the intellectual property, and so on. But what's most fascinating to me about, about uh, cloud technologies is, of course, uh, the bad guys got there first. Uh, the individuals and uh, criminal gangs that are driving uh, most of the financial fraud and more than likely the bulk of the corporate espionage uh, that we're hearing and reading about so, so much recently uh, are, are really the, the ones who pioneered uh, a cloud, what we refer to now as cloud computing. Um, these criminal gangs do most of their, of their work in the, in the cloud, uh, including uh, data storage, uh, data stealing, uh, to spamming, denial of service attacks, uh, to the distribution and delivery of, of uh, software exploits. Um, and, and these cybercrime groups really are operating in a top-down uh, hierarchical groups. Uh, and many of them have set up their businesses in a sort of assembly line uh, uh, type operation. I spend, I spend a lot of my time uh, tracking the operations of an organized cybercrime gang that uh, appears to have uh, more than uh, 250 members throughout Eastern Europe. Uh, and these guys operate in very discrete divisions. 
Um, one is one group is in charge of uh, the research and development. You know, these are the guys that write the malware. Uh, they're in charge of making sure that it stays uh, one step ahead or two steps ahead of the antivirus uh, technologies out there. Um, uh, uh, another group is responsible for uh, harvesting banking credentials, uh, checking account balances. Uh, there's still another group that's tasked with uh, figuring out which banks to hit based on uh, the methods they've developed uh, to circumvent the, the different uh, security mechanisms that the banks have in place. And, and then there are groups that specialize in recruiting uh, people to help them launder money. And when you, when you see this kind of criminal operation uh, pass the, uh, the, the job or the task along from one division of the gang to the other, uh, it's a very impressive site, and, and it's one that's very, uh, it's actually very evocative of the, of the drug cartels uh, in the way that they operate and, and share the profits, actually. Um, in fact, I, I've taken to calling some of the larger cyber criminal gangs uh, cloud cartels uh, because I think it concisely and accurately explains uh, how they operate um, and gives a real, sort of a real world frame of reference for, for what they're doing. Um, we're all familiar with the, with the international drug cartels, right? Um, in a lot of ways, I think the, the, the cloud cartels, the, the criminal gangs that I think are mostly responsible for much of the cybercrime that we see today, uh, operate in very much the same way as the drug cartels, particularly uh, when you think about uh, one of the biggest problems on the internet today, spam. Um, the desire to spread, uh, spread spam, which in most cases, what, advertises counterfeit commercial designer drugs, um, the parallels are pretty, pretty stark. Um, it, it, in fact, the similarities in the business operations between the drug cartels and the cloud cartels extend all the way down to the street level. Uh, their operations are so similar that uh, these two types of cartels actually share a lot of the same terminology. Uh, for example, the, the illegal drug market would not be, it would come to a halt, really, uh, if it were not for the activities of uh, drug mules, so they call it drug mules. Uh, and these are tens of thousands of individuals who physically carry uh, the narcotics on their person, in some cases actually ingest these drugs uh, as they're uh, tr transmitting them across the borders into the United States and Europe. And as I mentioned earlier, I've spent uh, the better part of the last year investigating the operations of a pretty massive organized cyber gang operating out of Eastern Europe. And these guys would not earn nearly as much money uh, if it weren't for so-called uh, money mules. And these are uh, willing or unwitting people who are recruited through work-at-home job scams over the internet. And, and they're basically recruited to help move money uh, from victim corporations, uh, co companies that these uh, organized crime groups have hacked into, uh, just to help them move that money out of uh, the United States.